This is Mac OS Ken. Looking at Apple's March quarter earnings, it is Friday, the 29th of April, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. It can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt, and sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help. That is where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. You're more than just your credit score. Upstart knows that. Instead of just looking at your credit score, Upstart's model considers additional factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score and... You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash macOSCan. U-P-S-T-A-R-T, that is upstart.com slash macOSCan to check your rate today. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you... Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash macOSCan. Good news behind and choppy seas ahead. That might be one way to describe Apple's second quarter fiscal year 2022 earnings. The company posted record March quarter revenue of $97.3 billion on earnings per share of $1.52. The $97 billion in revenue was up 9% from the same quarter a year earlier. That included March quarter revenue records for iPhone, Mac, and wearables home and accessories, as well as an all-time revenue record for the company's services segment. It also marked record March quarter revenue for the Americas, Europe, and Greater China, according to Apple CFO Luca Maestri. Bless the folks at CNBC for laying Apple's reported numbers alongside Wall Street's great expectations. That's great in terms of size, not accuracy. As it often does, Apple beat the street with most of its March quarter numbers. According to CNBC, record March quarter iPhone revenue of $50.6 billion beat the street's expectation of $47.9 billion. Record March quarter Mac revenues of $10.4 billion beat Wall Street expectations of $9.25 billion. iPad revenue set no records, falling nearly 2% year-on-year. That said, the $7.65 billion delivered on Apple's tablet beat the street's expectation of $7.1 billion. While wearables, home, and accessories revenue of $8.8 billion did set a March quarter record, it just missed Wall Street's estimate of $9 billion, and services revenue crushed it, setting an all-time revenue record of $19.8 billion that barely squeaked by the street's expectation of $19.7 billion. Gross margin came in at 43.7%, beating Wall Street's expectation of 43.1%. And finally, March quarter revenue of $97.3 billion beat consensus estimates of $93.9 billion. In Apple's press release on the numbers, Apple CEO Tim Cook said, This quarter's record results are a testament to Apple's relentless focus on innovation and our ability to create the best products and services in the world. We are delighted to see the strong customer response to our new products, as well as the progress we are making to become carbon neutral across our supply chain and our products by 2030. We are committed as ever to being a force for good in the world, both in what we create 
and what we leave behind. Of course, he had a lot more than that to say on the call. Let us go to that, shall we? After a short preamble trumpeting the many records set last quarter, Cook stopped to address two of the world's biggest stories, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the ongoing COVID pandemic. Worth noting, he did not mention Russia's invasion. Rather, he acknowledged the humanitarian tragedy unfolding in Ukraine. The CEO says Apple is supporting its team in the region, donating to humanitarian efforts, and donating gear to support refugees arriving here in the States. As for the pandemic, Cook says he and his are stoked to welcome workers back to the office in Europe and the U.S. This is the company keeps an eye on COVID-related disruptions in China. In the meantime, Apple will keep doing what it does, driving the innovations that can enrich people's lives. And there is our transition into business, with the CEO highlighting the Mac and its transition to Apple Silicon. Shout out to the M1 Ultra specifically. Interest and excitement around Apple Silicon helped push Mac revenue last quarter up 15% versus the same quarter a year earlier, despite not having as many Macs to sell as people wanted to buy. CFO Maestri says the last seven quarters have been the best seven quarters ever for Mac. In the March quarter, Apple saw a record number of upgraders, and yet half of last quarter's Mac buyers were getting a Mac for the first time. Imagine how well it would have done if they'd had enough to go around. Moving on from the Mac, Apple CEO trumpeted the two new green iPhones, as well as iPhone SE. Cook says people who like smaller form factors love it, as do people buying iPhone for the first time. That said, it was apparently the iPhone 13 family that pushed iPhone revenue up 5% year-on-year, despite a tough compare iPhone set records in both developed and emerging markets, according to CFO Maestri. Here in the States, the latest from 451 Research has customer satisfaction with the iPhone 13 line, sitting at a practically unfathomable 99%. Such satisfaction led the iPhone active install base to a new all-time high across all geographies, according to the CFO. What can you say about iPad? They are great when people can get them, which they're having a hard time doing. CEO Cook says demand is there. Of course, supply is lagging, something Apple said would happen on the last earnings call. Revenue was down 2% versus the same quarter a year ago due to continued supply constraints. Like the rest of Apple's hardware, iPad's installed base hit a new all-time record in the March quarter and... Just like the Mac, half the people buying iPad last quarter were walking away with their first iPad. The category wearables, home, and accessories saw revenue rise 12% year-on-year. That's Apple Watch Series 7, Apple Watch SE, HomePod Mini, and AirPods all doing their respective things and helping the category to March quarter revenue records in both developed and emerging markets. Shout out from the CFO to the wearable segment of that segment. That part has doubled in size in the last three years, putting it on par with Fortune 100 companies. And it is growing by leaps and bounds. According to Maestri, two-thirds of people buying Apple Watch last quarter were new to that product. As mentioned earlier, services set an all-time quarterly record for Apple, the $19.8 billion in revenue was up 17% from the same quarter a year earlier. That's Apple TV+, Plus, Fitness+, Plus, and so many more. CFO Maestri says services realized March quarter records in every geographic segment and services category that included all-time records for the App Store, Music, Cloud Services, and Apple Care, and March quarter records for video, advertising, and payment services. Transacting accounts, 
paid accounts and accounts with paid subscriptions all hit all-time highs last quarter in every area Apple tracks. Spotlight on paid subscriptions. Apple now has more than 825 million of those, up more than 165 million over the last year. Apple CEO bragged on a couple of new stores opened over the last couple of months, one in the UAE and Apple's third and largest store in South Korea. He also heralded the return of Today at Apple sessions at actual Apple stores here in the States. Cook also offered thanks to folks working in Apple stores, customer care centers, channel partner stores, and in Apple Care teams for bringing customers the best of Apple. There was also a swing back to the softer side, with Cook highlighting Apple's work toward a cleaner environment, a greener supply chain, a more inclusive workforce, and programs to help further skills, education, and opportunities for people who work for Apple, as well as people outside the company. Addressing Apple in government and the enterprise, the company's CFO highlighted a program piloted by Alaska Airlines, replacing traditional check-in kiosks with iPads. He also shouted out that Australian police force that's kitted its cop cars with CarPlay, and he offered a quick plug for Apple Business Essentials. Looking ahead to the June quarter, as expected, Apple did not offer revenue guidance given the continued uncertainty around the world in the near term, according to the CFO. But there's always room for color. A number of factors are likely to negatively impact the June quarter in the company's estimation. Among them, COVID shutdowns plus the ongoing chip shortage are making it hard to make supply and demand come together. That's going to put a drag on the company somewhere between $4 billion and $8 billion, substantially larger than what Apple saw last quarter, according to Mr. Maestri. COVID-related disruptions are also having some impact on customer demand in China. Foreign exchange headwinds will likely hamper Apple's growth. Killing sales in Russia will likely hamper Apple's growth. Services will grow double digits though that growth will be slower than it was last quarter due to the aforementioned issues. Interesting to note, as far as return of capital, Evercore analyst Ahmed Darianani and others got most of what they wanted. Darianani had expected a dividend increase of 6 to 7% and at least $90 billion in additional buyback authorization. The $90 billion he got, though the dividend was only raised 5%, Apple's board of directors has declared a cash dividend of $0.23 cents per share of the company's common stock, according to Apple, payable on the 12th of May to shareholders of record as of close of business on the 9th of May. With that, the call was open to questions. We'll dip into those in a moment, but first a word from Trade Coffee. For the past few years, my favorite place for coffee has been my house. I keep a few different roasts on hand. Sometimes I like lighter. Sometimes I like darker. Some call me persnickety. My favorite place for coffee got better with trade coffee. See, when I'm at the store, I'll read the tasting notes on the given bag. Then I cross my fingers and hope for the best. Trade does it better. First, they ask serious questions about your coffee tastes what you like, how you make it, how you take it. Then they reach out to more places than most of us could get to to find a coffee to match your taste. They got it right for me. They think they'll get it right for you. But you can be sure with Trade's first match guarantee. They are so sure that they will match you right the first time that if they don't, they'll find out what you didn't like and have an actual coffee expert work with you to find you a better bag for free. If you care about your coffee, you should try Trade. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com 
Mac OS can. That is more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash macOSCan for $30 off. And don't forget about Mother's Day coming up. A Trade subscription is the perfect gift for the coffee lovers in your life. Drink Trade dot com slash mac os can are you there caller i'm glad you waited morgan stanley analyst katie huberty had a macro question she wanted the apple executives thoughts on consumer spending given the current market volatility inflation concerns and all that fun stuff How is that affecting, or how will that affect, consumers' ability to buy what Apple is selling? CEO Cook says it is something that Apple is keeping an eye on, though the bigger concern for the company right now is trying to meet demand with supply. Evercore analyst Ahmed Darianani had a couple of questions about the $4 billion to $8 billion headwind. Will that be sales deferred or sales destroyed? And can you say which products will be hardest hit? Earlier in the call, CEO Cook had pointed out that the 4 to 8 range had to do with how long factories in China, particularly in the Shanghai corridor, will take to ramp back up to full production. Nearly all of those factories have restarted, which is cause for optimism as far as Cook's concerned. To Darianani's question... Most product categories will be affected. As to whether sales are deferred or destroyed, it's some and some. If a person needs a piece of hardware right then, that sale could be lost. What the ratio will be, well, Apple does have thoughts on that, but those are thoughts the company was not willing to share. Citigroup analyst Gentleman Jim Suva wondered whether all of the disruption in the supply chain has Apple rethinking the supply chain. Like when there are enough components to stockpile, will Apple stockpile components? Or is it just going to stick with just-in-time inventory? In this business, said Cook, you don't want to hold a ton of inventory... That said, he thinks Apple has managed moving through the madness of the past couple of years pretty well. Apple learns something new every day and applies that learning to its business. J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee wondered where iPhone SE was strongest. Since Apple's competitors probably wondered that as well, Apple's CEO declined to answer... He did, however, sing a song of iPhone 13, Strength. And finally, B of A analyst Wamsi Mohan had a question that hasn't been asked for a while. Despite returning capital to shareholders, Apple is still sitting on a ton of cash. Why not buy something big in the healthcare space or the fitness space or the content space? CEO Cook says if Apple found the right big thing to buy, it would buy that thing. Until then, they'll keep buying small companies for the intellectual property and the talent they bring to the Cupertino table. That was not all of the questions, nor all of the analysts. If you want to grok the fullness, the call is up to replay on Apple's investor site and will be for the next couple of weeks. It is now available as a podcast and will be for the next couple of weeks. And I have to blow a big Mac OS Ken kiss to Seeking Alpha for their transcript of Thursday's call. Demand is there, but Choppy sees ahead. How does the street like Apple's acumen through June? We'll check analyst reaction to Thursday's call on the next edition of Mac OS Ken. Mac OS Ken. Oops. Brought to you by me and sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. 
Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.